Welcome to the Living Well Church podcast and thanks for tuning in today. Our mission as a church is to help people find faith in Jesus and a life of purpose and hope. You're about to watch a message that will challenge you, inspire you, encourage you and most of all point you to Jesus and the life of purpose and hope he has planned for you. So lean in and enjoy and let God speak into your life. Most of you know my dad. He is the one that looks a bit like Bilbo Baggins, that is, uh, was here in the morning service, but not here. Do you know what? No one laughed at that in the morning service. It's thank you. Like, <laughs> just want to point out to my husband that I can be funny. Um, yeah, so he was there. Anyway, my dad, if you know anything about him, he loves Land Rovers. And um, he's always loved Land Rovers, and he's always had a Land Rover. And a lot of my childhood... Uh, memories are clinging to the back of whatever surface I could find in the back of his Land Rover as dad decides to go up banks, down banks, over hills, off hills, wherever he could go over and under and round in a Land Rover, he tried it and he loved it. But therefore, my dad gets slightly irate about people that maybe have a Land Rover but that don't drive it quite like a Land Rover should. So I'll give you one clear example. Um, Quite often we lived by country roads when I was growing up and we may be going up a country road and my dad might be in his car and we'll be passing somebody else who's coming towards us in a Land Rover. And if that person refused to go, you know, pull over onto the mud or refused to go up the bank so we could get up in the car, he would be a little bit frustrated um, because he'd be like, but that's what a Land Rover's made for. It's got all this power. Why aren't they just going up the bank or going in the mud and I'm just in a little car? And so he loves to use a Land Rover for what it's being created for. And he knows that a Land Rover has all this power and he loves to put his foot down and use that Land Rover to its maximum power. Similarly, this morning, I'm talking about the fact that we have huge access to power. We have a supernatural power available to us. And I just want to talk about whether actually in our Christian walk, we actually live quite naturally and we kind of pootle along in our Land Rovers and we don't often go off road or we don't often go up a bank or we don't often go over a hill. In actual fact, what we quite often do is just pootle along and we don't really ever access that huge amount of supernatural power that's available to us because Jesus is supernatural from the moment he was born he was born in a supernatural way from a virgin he then his first miracle is he turns water into wine haven't been able to do that yet although I'd quite like to master that miracle Um, constantly in his walk he is engaging in supernatural prayer it says really clearly in the bible that he doesn't do anything that the lord doesn't ask him to do so he's in constant supernatural communion with the father his teaching is transcendent it's timeless it says something of the supernatural in it and um, it kind of we still teach it today which shows that he fasts for 40 days he supernaturally heals leprosy he heals people of demon possession he heals a paralyzed man he heals the blind he calms a storm He feeds 5,000 with little food. He supernaturally walks on water. And out of a supernatural love for us, he decides to die on a cross and then supernaturally rise again to defeat sin and death for good. And then he goes up to heaven. Jesus lives in a four-wheel drive, four by four, constant foot throttle, supernatural life. And we, as we become Christians, are told in Ephesians 5 to imitate him. In fact, in Ephesians 5, it says, live a life full of love, following the example of Christ. So we are called to live in this supernatural way. In Romans 8, it it, it, emphasizes this even more. In verse 9, it says, you, however, are not in the realm of the flesh, but you live in the realm of the spirit, if indeed the spirit of God lives in you. And if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, they do not belong to Christ. But if Christ is in you, then even your body is subject to death because of sin, but the spirit gives life because of righteousness. And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, 
He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of the spirit that lives in you. And in the Bible, it also talks about in other places, the power that has been given to us, the authority has been given to us. But Romans 8 really clearly says the same spirit that rose Jesus from the dead, that miraculous supernatural spirit is also within us. That huge amount of supernatural power is available to us. And so how do we live with that? Do we often just pootle around in our Land Rovers? Or do we often seek to go off-road to experience Jesus in the supernatural way? To do this, I'm going to look through. Scott Wellard last week looked at Jesus walking on the water. I was a bit nervous. I thought he was going to steal my preach. But fortunately, he didn't. And so I'm going to explore Jesus' supernatural power, us living in the supernatural through that tale. So if, we want, if you want to, you can turn to Matthew 14 with me. It starts from verse 22. It says, Immediately, Jesus made disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone, and the boat was already a considerable distance from the land, buffeted by the waves as the wind was against it. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out with them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water and came towards Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and began to seek and cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? And when they climbed into a boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, truly, you are the son of God. You know, if I want to I just look at Peter this morning. Peter is a fisherman. Peter is really comfortable on the water. It's where he spent so much of his life. He's really comfortable in a boat. It's what's natural to him. It's what he used to do day in, day out as his daily job. So that setting is really natural for him. And you know, I wonder whether in our lives we quite often love what's natural. We love what's familiar. And in our little Land Rovers, we go quite often around the natural roads, the familiar roads all the time. If you just consider your weeks and your days, I wonder actually how much the everyday becomes the everyday. That you get up, you go to work, you come back from work, you have dinner, you go to bed, you get up the next morning, maybe you go to school, you come back, you go to college or you come back. Maybe you get up, you look after the kids, you go to bed. And actually the everyday quite quickly is becoming the everyday. And actually if you're honest with yourself, your life is quite natural. And you can look back in your life and you can see over the last weeks, maybe days, maybe months, maybe years, that your life has become fairly natural. And there's not that many times where you can honestly say, I've been extremely dependent on the supernatural when God's taken me off road or he's taken me off path and I've had to depend on him. But rather you're like those disciples sitting in the boat in a very natural setting. And you know, we have to look at Peter got out of the boat, but there are other disciples who made the decision just to stay in who just decided to stay in what was natural, what was comfortable. And you know, this morning I want to ask you that maybe being natural, being comfortable has perhaps become a goal to you without even realizing it. You know, holidays are a good thing. Having rest is a good thing. But has it become the goal? Has it become, oh, I can just get to the weekend. I'll just get to Sunday afternoon where I can just put my feet up or sleep on the sofa. I can't wait till I go on holiday. And actually, rather than wanting supernatural experiences or wanting Jesus' kingdom to come, actually having comfort and rest has become your goal. And, you know, maybe daily you make little decisions 
which are working towards that. So you've swapped having the opportunity for supernatural prayer for a time to flick around on social media. Maybe you've swapped time to have supernatural teaching or to discuss the supernatural with a friend over a coffee for gossip. Maybe you've swapped having an opportunity to see supernatural healing and doing what the Bible calls you to do, which is bring them to the leaders of the church or to anoint them with oil for actually just feeling sorry for somebody from afar. Maybe you've swapped supernaturally loving someone, pouring grace upon them, pouring forgiveness over them, instead just holding on to that bit of a grudge. Maybe you've swapped supernatural unity. And particularly maybe in your family or your church context, you've, gone, oh, you've swapped seeking supernatural unity for going, oh, no, I, I don't really like that person. I don't really what, like what they've done on Facebook today. I don't really like that post. I don't really like what they said to me. Oh, I can't be bothered to talk to them today. Living well, church, they've moved from that comfortable place down the road to a school. What are they thinking? <laughs> maybe you've swapped the opportunity for supernatural unity. And instead, you are, you are holding on to things that you feel that are make you more comfortable. And, our, you know, Francis Chan, it's a book that we as the leaders have been reading recently, and he talks about supernatural unity, he talks about supernatural love, and he says a line in it, which I'll praise it, but it says, if the church loved in the way that Jesus commanded us to love, then it would just challenge non-believers to believe in Jesus Christ purely by the way we love one another. You know, we should be loving one another in that supernatural, crazy way that Jesus talks about. It should make us uncomfortable because the gospel is really uncomfortable. You know, when you read the Bible, Jesus doesn't talk about a lovely, comfortable, cushy life. He doesn't talk about pootling along in a Land Rover. He talks about constantly off-roading. He talks about scaring yourself. You know, those kind of pants-gripping moments. He talks about that the Christian walk is about entering through the narrow gate. He talks about the fact that you will be hated. He talks about the fact that you will experience suffering. And he talks about the fact that you are called to give your coat to your brother and give beyond what your wildest means. He tells rich people to sell everything they've got. And he also tells you to serve. You know, the Christian walk is not comfortable. The Christian walk is exceptionally uncomfortable. And so Peter realizes this. Peter doesn't remain in the boat. Peter decides to get out of the boat because he realizes the supernatural power that is available to him. So even though Peter is in an extremely natural and familiar setting, he decides to off-road. And I want to challenge us this morning and look at your own positions in church or how you serve in church. As I'm looking around, I can see the vast majority of us have roles. Maybe you're on the setup team. Maybe you're doing children's work. Maybe you do the sound team at the back. Maybe you do worship. Maybe you are in the media role. Maybe you serve coffee. Maybe you're on the women's team, the men's team. Maybe you preach. Maybe you're a leader. And what I want to challenge you today is maybe you've become, these things have become quite natural. Maybe actually doing kids' work has become quite natural. Yeah, I go, I do the study, I chat to them, I go away. Doing youth's become quite natural. Doing the ladies' team or doing the coffee has become quite natural. And what I want to challenge you today is how can you have a supernatural experience in that? What's the Lord calling you to do in that role, which means that you're so reliant on the supernatural power of Jesus that when people see you, it's like you're walking on water and they know it's only by Jesus you're doing that. Because it should be our supernatural way that challenged the natural world. And so Peter, he gets out of the boat and he walks on water. Only through Jesus' power can he do that. And you know he sinks. Yeah, he does, doesn't he? You know, he, he messes up a bit. He looks at the way, he looks at the wind, he sinks. And sometimes when we step out in the supernatural, we might sink. But that's okay because we've had that supernatural experience. I don't know, I can't say this. Don't hold me to ransom over this. But if I was Peter... I wouldn't care that I sunk. <laughs> I really wouldn't. I'd be like, I walked on water. <laughs> yeah. 
You know, I'd be really chuffed about that. And Peter still is only one of two people who I ever have known who have walked on water and he's gone down in history for that. That's pretty amazing. It doesn't matter if in our humanity we fail for a second. The importance is that we've got the guts to get out of the boat and experience the supernatural in the first place. And so I'm coming to the end here because I want to spend some time with, with Jesus and I really feel that the Lord wants to speak to us individually today. But um, Peter also didn't have a reason, reason to walk on water. It wasn't like Jesus was like, come and walk with me to get to this destination. Come and get, come out of the boat and I'm going to show you how to do such and such. Come out of the boat and we'll have a little tea party on the water. There wasn't any reason really why he was going to walk on water other than having that supernatural experience. Other than people being able to look at him and going, only by Jesus is he doing that. And actually when he gets back in the boat, they say, truly, you are the son of God to Jesus. And sometimes the Lord calls us to do things not because we need to go somewhere or get somewhere. Not because, we, you know, there's a great deal of purpose in it other than other people being able to say and saying, surely, surely Jesus is the son of God because of your actions. Surely Jesus is the son of God because that church shows such supernatural unity. Surely Jesus is the son of God because that church shows so much supernatural love. Surely that Jesus is the son of God because the way that person leads that children's group is just miraculous. And so I'm going to just tell you a bit about my life where I had a real supernatural experience which changed my course, which completely shifted me because I really feel and sense this morning that the Lord wants to speak to some people and give people a supernatural experience which is going to shift your course. It's going to shift the way you do children's work. It's going to shift the way you serve coffee. It's going to shift the way you do the men's team or the women's team or how you preach. And so when in my life, I remember being in this building years ago, and this part wasn't even built yet. We're now church first moved from Lydon to Whitfield. And I remember standing in the hall of Arches Court, it was then, and I remember looking up during worship and seeing Archer's Court and the logo on the ceiling during worship. And I really felt the Lord say, you will wear that badge. And that's all it was. It wasn't any more than that. It was just you should wear that badge. Didn't think much of it, but I was like, hmm, it's a bit strange. The next day, I wasn't working at the time. I'd just moved back after university. The next day, I get a phone call from the head of English from the school. Now, I knew her because I taught her son riding and um, she phoned and said do you want to be a trainee English teacher now I really didn't want to be a trainee English teacher my mum was an English teacher it was the last thing on earth I ever wanted to be but I said yes out of because of that Arches Court connection she was there God had spoken to me the day before I felt there was something supernatural about it so I said yes Cut a long story short, I start the training. The very first day of the training, when you sign in, you get your badge and everything, they gave me a little badge that you had to wear of the logo. And I was like, what a supernatural thing. You know, and God shifts. God doesn't want us to just live these natural lives where we pootle around in our Land Rovers. That's not what we were made for. That's not how he built us. He built us to go off-roading and to live this crazy life that imitates Jesus's four-by-four, four-wheel-drive life. 